breaking news. The Canon R5 Mark II specs have leaked and Sony leaked the most amazing, huge professional lens that really could drive professional event and wedding photographers over to the platform from Canon and Nikon. I'll tell you what's coming. But first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a tool, a platform that you use to create the ultimate website for your business, your portfolio, your video reel, for your personal projects, whatever you can imagine. It starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. Take appointments from clients, sell prints or other products, get detailed analytics that you need to build and refine your business. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony, you get a completely free trial. Try it out, make it beautiful, see how easy it is. And when you love it, use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off your subscription. Thank you, Squarespace. Our top story is a new leaked Sony lens that I have been begging for, waiting for, because it's something Canon kind of had, but this Sony's better. This is the Sony 24-70 f 2.0, not f 2.8. We have the 24-70 f 2.8. It looks like this. There have been many for generations, but I've never seen a lens that was a full stop faster, that could gather twice as much light, that could have so much more background blur, and yet still have this 24 to 70 focal length. Now we don't know a lot about it. Sony Alpha rumors leaked this and nothing else except that this was coming soon. We don't know the weight, the price, the size of it, but we can extrapolate. We can do a little bit of math. There is a lens that's pretty similar, and that is the Canon 28 to 70 F2. When Canon launched this alongside their new R, when they launched the platform, I was blown away. I thought this was the first of many ultra fast lenses that would be enabled by the new mirrorless platforms and then nothing. The promise of having big open wide mounts like this with fast small lenses never really materialized. We were stuck with the same f-stops that we had in the DSLR world. And while the 28 to 70 f2.8 was great, incredibly sharp, it was also huge and so heavy that with the little EOS R body, the only thing that existed at the time, it was very hard to just balance it. But the deal breaker for me, the reason I bought the Canon 24-70 f2.8 over the 28-70 f2 was that 24-28 to range. I found in my daily shooting, I often used 24 to 28. After all, that's what we're accustomed to with our phones. I think 24 millimeters is the most important focal length today, but especially for the purposes you would use this for, events and weddings and landscape photography, you really need that. Now the Canon version is 3.15 pounds. It was absolutely huge, but Sony's gear is always a little bit smaller. Remember Sony made the Walkman for decades. They have prided themselves on making things smaller and more compact, and their gear is always a little bit smaller and lighter. So let's compare the Canon 24 to 70 f2.8 to the Sony's, and maybe we can look at the size and weight differences and extrapolate out what Sony's 24 to 70 might look like. If we look at the specs for both of the lenses, we can see that the Sony is about 20% lighter or so, which might mean that the 24 to 70 f2 would be two and a half pounds. And if we extrapolate the price, I think it'll be about $3,000. And this lens doesn't directly compare to the 28 to 70 because it has that extra wide focal length, which could actually end up adding a little bit to the weight. But I still doubt that Sony would ever make a lens that weighs as much as that 28 to 70. Now, our big story. This is huge. We finally have specs for the Canon R5 Mark II. And I actually think the Canon R5 that I have here is probably the most important camera of the entire mirrorless era. As a wildlife photographer, it introduced animal IAF, which I had never found usable in any camera before. It, it blew me away. I am blown away. Both the R5 and R6 instantly locked onto moving birds as subjects and tracked them across the frame without requiring me to change focus points. The autofocus was also amazingly accurate, getting about 80% of these faraway subjects perfectly in focus. And instantly this became Chelsea and I's main go-to camera. The R5 really changed everything. It won our Camera of the Year award that year, but that was about four years ago. It's really old. 
and it doesn't compare that well to modern day flagships like the Nikon Z8 or the Sony Alpha 1. So let's see what Canon has in store for the R5 Mark II. And this comes to us via Canon Rumors. You can always get this sort of news more quickly if you follow the CanonRumors.com blog. The sensor is 45 megapixels. Okay, okay, that hasn't changed. That's the same. But they are saying they're going to give it a new digit processor, and that probably doesn't mean anything to us raw shooters. But if you're shooting JPEG, maybe the color science or something, maybe the sharpness or the noise reduction will be a little bit better. They're saying it's going to give us 60 frames per second, which is a huge upgrade from the 20 frames per second in the R5 with the mechanical shutter. But the specs did say that would be the max burst rate. And to me, that's probably a pretty big asterisk on it because the Canon R3 has a burst mode where it will do like 168 frames per second, something like that. And I find it utterly useless <laughs> because when you activate the burst mode, you press the shutter and the camera just completely locks up and it takes pictures really, really fast and dumps them to the card, but you can't see anything on the viewfinder. So you can't follow moving action. It's not refocusing or adjusting exposure. It's just taking a whole bunch of pictures. So it might be useful for something like capturing a batter at a baseball diamond swinging when you want to get as many frames per second, but nothing is moving or changing. But for capturing a bird flying at you or somebody running up the baseline, absolutely useless. And so I consider it to be a pretty meaningless feature, but we didn't get a regular frames per second rate. I would expect this to be improved a little bit. Maybe we can say 30 frames per second, and that would put it on par with what the Z8 can do in JPEG and what the Sony A1 can do in RAW. I'm genuinely super excited about the next spec, and that is a 3.2 inch flippy screen, which that's not remarkable. The R5 has that, but this specified OLED. OLED is just the technology used to make the screen here, but it's a huge upgrade from the LCD screens that almost every camera uses. Look at the side-by-side -side shot of two iPhones using LCD on top and OLED on the bottom. OLED provides significantly more contrast, the difference between the darks and the brightest parts of the image. It can also provide significantly brighter images. So maybe the R5 Mark II will finally have a screen that we can see in the sunlight. The rear screen is often our client's first impression of our work. They're going to be wowed or they're going to be disappointed, not just based on our images, but how they're presented, the technology and the screen. And even though these cameras cost thousands of dollars, probably close to $4,000 in, in the case of the R5 here, the screens have been abysmal, far worse than you would get on an iPhone. So it's about time that somebody gave us a higher quality screen. We've been asking for it for years. Thank you, Canon, for finally addressing that. The rumors also say emphatically that it will not have a mechanical shutter. That's good news and bad news. <laughs> if they are cutting out the mechanical shutter, that means that the sensor readout speed is fast enough that Canon feels it does not need a mechanical shutter. And that's a big deal because the Canon R3 has a very fast sensor readout speed, but still included a mechanical shutter. So it's probably not a global sensor camera. It's probably a stacked sensor camera like the Canon R3, but with high megapixels. That would put it on par with the Nikon Z8 and the Sony A1, which I think are its closest competitors. This is kind of bad news though, too, because if you compare the Sony A1 and the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z8 does not have a mechanical shutter. The Sony A1 does. With my strobes, at least, using the Nikon Z8, I can get a flash sync up to 1 1 60th of a second. With my A1, I get flash sync up to 1 400th of a second. And for portrait photographers shooting strobes out in the sunlight, that difference is huge. It's enough that I don't take the Z8 for those types of shoots. I choose the A1 instead. When the Z8 was launched, Nikon used the lack of a mechanical shutter as if it was a feature when really it was a pretty significant drawback. And I hope Canon doesn't make the same mistake. Give me a mechanical shutter that I don't have to use unless I need it. Now let's talk video specs. The R5 Mark II is rumored to support 4K at 120 frames per second, which should be really good for things like wildlife video or slow motion, though we shoot this in 4K 60 on my Canon R3 and that's generally enough. It should also support 8K RAW. That's all the specs that they gave us. 
because the Canon R5 original one also supports 8K RAW at 30 frames per second. I would hope it would at least jump to 8K at 60 frames per second, especially if it has a stack sensor. It should be able to do that. And if it does 60 frames per second burst, again, that supports the idea that it can read out that fast. The Nikon Z8 and Z9 can do that. So I would hope that the Canon R5 Mark II wouldn't be behind. I would also hope that they wouldn't require it to be in RAW. I would hope that they'd have processors in there so that it could write it out as a compressed video file because RAW files, 8K RAW files especially, end up being so huge that memory cards become a real problem. Canon Rumors is also saying it will support C-Log 1, 2, and 3, of course. We, that's a given. It will just provide more dynamic range for video. Canon Rumors is saying it'll come at the end of April and that they should have more specs for us soon. I can't wait to see what else is coming. I would definitely hope they'd get the frames per second up because this is Canon's highest megapixel body and we want to be able to use it for wildlife. That requires high frames per second, amazing autofocus, and high megapixels. So let's see how it compares. Be sure to subscribe because the minute production copies are available, we are going to have a review out comparing it against Sony and Nikon to see who the new king of mirrorless is. In the comments down below, let me know if you're interested in the Canon R5 Mark II. I'm thinking the price is gonna be right about $4,000. Let's call it 3998. Is that worth it to you? For me, I don't know. The Canon R5 is still pretty good. So they're gonna have to blow me away if I'm gonna be recommending that people upgrade. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace.com slash Tony is where you start whenever you have a business idea, a personal project, or work you just wanna show off. Social media now is just crammed with ads. It looks like garbage, but Squarespace is beautiful. It's exactly what you want because it's for you by you. Choose your colors, your fonts, your style. Define a whole brand with Squarespace. Promote yourself, not some big social media company, by going to squarespace.com slash Tony, getting a free trial. Just check it out. No credit card needed until you decide to sign up. But I bet you will because it, it's that good. Squarespace.com slash Tony for your free trial. Use the coupon code Tony when you decide to sign up and they'll give you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace.